Chat, here we go. It's a best of five between Nush and Toxic. Nush had been on a great run in his 1v1 matches up until he faced Nupo. Nupo unfortunately took him down in this most recent match. That was a 4-1 win for Nupo. But Nush was showing some levels. He's ranked currently in the top 10 on RL duels. And I think because of that, we need to see how Nush matches up against pretty much all the players that were in the Salt Mine 3 because Nush was actually underage and I believe Salt Mine 3 was played before they adjusted the rules to say that, you know, 13 year olds can play in RLCS and can play in basically any event. I think at the time it was still 15 years old was necessary for a prize event. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Nush wasn't in it, right? Am I crazy? No, I'm pretty sure Nush wasn't in it. Anyways, Toxic was and Toxic had a decent performance and so now we're going to see how he fares against Nush and Toxic also pointed out that Gamers 8 is likely going to be a nice little dish off the backboard. A doomsday dish, if you will, for Nush to open up the match. But Toxic pointed out that Gamers 8, you know, will be... I think the qualifiers for it will probably be somewhat soon. At least Toxic's under that impression. And that, of course, is crew battles that includes 1v1. So it's important to be fresh on your 1v1. You can't get too stagnant. That is a big tournament that you are not going to want to leave any prize money on the line. And so Nush is willing, or sorry, I should say Toxic is willing to put in a little bit of work. And today, that's going to be against Nush. I'm interested to see... Oh, this is a good setup from Toxic. First touch reset. Needed a double off the backboard if he was going to go that high. And even though he didn't get it, he was able to get the boost steal. And now undercutting Nush as he takes this one out to the midfield. Nush, though, just relentless on the ball. And it's eventually going to pay off as he gets his second goal. Asmeric, they've been a tier one for 21 months. Long time tier one. And I was able to meet Asmeric at Gamers 8. You know, I was just talking about Gamers 8. He was there at Gamers 8 last time. Don't know if I'll be able to go next time. Maybe if I'm working the event, it's probably really the only way that I'll be able to go back. But even then, it was very cool. I want to see, I think Toxic's most recent matches are probably at the end as he goes for a nice air dribble bump. Taking out all the nonsense to get his first goal. Probably against Salt Mine 3, or Salt Mine 3 opponents, because I know his coach at the time, although as of 24 hours ago, I think that has changed. His coach of Top Cougars, you know, at least joked about him having to be done playing ones so he could focus on the threes mindset. And I think while he would still be willing to play ones even after that, uh, he also recently changed teams. Uh, so no longer with Gregan and Top Cougars, it would seem if we are to believe the news as Toxic loses this air dribble just near the net and can't force the 50 through. I'm actually really surprised he didn't want to take the wall to air dribble. Such a perfect setup. Instead, plays the ground game and doesn't play that solid of a flick either. Ends up just putting a rolling ball on target. And Toxic's probably going to go back to his air dribble bump. Or actually, I guess he's going to try and expect a Backflip challenge from Nush. Nush has done a good job of putting some fear into him, I guess. Because he definitely let that ball roll away thinking he needed to win a challenge. Whereas Nush had been shadowing and probably would have been susceptible to the air drill bump that I was expecting. His power slide cut does not touch the ball, but Toxic not giving up on the play. Nush, actually pretty impressive control and patience there. Not to get thrown off by Toxic and still make the save and actually instantly use the reset. Did he get another one? I thought for a second he was going to wave dash back to the ball and show that he got a second reset. But he saw Toxic coming off the ceiling, so he got movement on the ball in that exact moment, which is what you need to do to try and make the attacker's angle be off. And he might have even gotten another reset in the process. Either way, he didn't need it. It's the ball falling on target. Nush is going to bump Toxic as he plays out of his own half with zero boost. Another bump as well. This one he had to make off the wall. It's a very hard commit to on zero boost make an attacking bump high in the air if you don't connect on that they're going to be floating to the ground really slow and there's a good chance the person with boost is going to be able to punish you but he did connect perfectly and what that means is he sent toxic to the moon and was able to recover but only for so long as toxic eventually gets his possession this time power slide cutting the ball he did read that backflip challenge that backflip challenge was to the side of the ball, not directly on it. So it was 
Never going to stand a good chance of being able to break up that play. Ush. Staying aggressive here off the kickoff, and he has been able to read some of these early challenges from Toxic. Previously, it was one in the air. This time, it's going to be one on the ground as he sees that Toxic is cutting in field and looking to put a pretty aggressive challenge on the ball. Late kickoff from Toxic as Nush not going to be allowed to make anything happen off the ceiling. Pretty impressive recovery from Toxic to break that up. And now he's actually forced Nush into losing possession here. A ball that probably should have been under Nush's control now has Toxic relevant in the play, although it is eventually going to lead to this air dribble. Nush wants the bump. Toxic, nice save. Actually, great recovery on the top of the net to get the reset for the wave dash. But even then, Nush able to keep that ball just outside the orange net. Great 50 from him. Toxic really needs to score quickly here and might have an opportunity. A fake. Nice fake from Toxic. Now 18 seconds for him to get one more. As Nush maybe regrets not challenging there in that corner. He didn't want to lose that challenge and then quickly get scored on. But turns out not going for it all. Almost got him scored on faster. Kickoff win for Toxic to the ceiling for a reset to try and clutch up to send it to overtime and the front flip will place the ball perfectly away from Nush and will do exactly that. I say overtime, but that one took less than 10 seconds. So maybe Toxic has a win here in regulation in store. Delaying that play does not allow Nush to get momentum across the net. If Nush had rushed across the net with speed to be able to make the kind of save on a ball that far away, he would have been there too early. So in force he has to, so instead, he has to hit the brakes, and then Toxic can place far, knowing Nush won't be able to make up that distance. Nush, wave dash kickoff in overtime, puts it on target, and Toxic can't stop it. So Toxic, it was a good fight to bring back game number one to force this overtime, but the wave dash kickoff proves to be too much. Toxic pushed himself through the ball and didn't have the benefit of the dashing recovery to help him get back as Nush takes game number one. Game number two. Took a bit to get going in the previous game for Toxic, but he had it figured out towards the end. Unfortunately, just a kickoff in overtime was the difference. Can Nush get out to another early lead? He has one touch on this air dribble and goes for the wave dash shot on the landing. A really safe option as Toxic waiting on the goal line, hoping for Anush to be overly aggressive and take that early shot that he can make an easy save. Anush now sees a lot of that in front of him. Toxic should be able to recover it in time. The wave dash, the backwards wave dash shot. Wait, it's going to be a goal. Did he push Toxic off a position that he wanted to be in. Was it basically a threatened bump here on this wave dash? Oh, it kind of was. Oh, he actually, no, it wasn't even a threatened bump. He made contact. And I think he slowed that flip down and it would have otherwise, you know, been enough power to make the save. So actually a pretty impressive adjustment there from Nush, who originally drove away from the play backwards, but recovered back to make the bump on Toxic and now an air dribble bump back the other way off the kickoff to equalize the game. Toxic. Delay kickoff and now another delay type play as he waits for Nush to go flipping past the ball. Just inches away from the perfect landing. Toxic was trying to land on that ball and send it into his back corner where he could get a clean possession. But instead, bounced up over the top of him. Nush trying to cancel the downward momentum. That can work when the defender is trying to challenge and meet you on the ground, but Toxic a bit backed off enough to not be exposed by that. A little bump from Toxic will give him the lead. Nush. Not able to recover on that sidewall off the bump. Toxic 
Toxic chain dashing like crazy to try and catch back up to this ball. Even though it didn't seem to make a huge difference in the play, it does get him out to the midfield. One step ahead of Nush where he's able to reset on boost that maybe he otherwise would not have been able to had he not chained those dashes in the back corner. He's got another steal on Nush right now, trying to starve him out while doing his best to conserve his own boost. Nush still on very little, and this might be the opportunity, a little wall dash to set up this off, <laughs> off the back wall, but not able to pinpoint it in the top left like he was looking for. Double jump pop over the top of Nush and into the nets to make it 3-1. Toxic extending the lead. Hadn't seen a lead much so far in the match, but has it up to 4 1 now. And it seems like he has adapted the kickoff that beat him in overtime. A lot of wave dash kickoffing as well as delays. Look at the shot from Toxic. He has not been backing it down from the aerial attempts. And this time it'll be a first touch reset into a second reset. To put it out behind Nush, a incredible shot from Toxic. Getting Mechie in the air to extend the lead. Nush is teaming with Dr. Known and Ops. Yes, as far as I'm aware, Team Rock will be staying the same, which is the crew of 14 year olds. I don't know if any of them are 15 now, but Nush, Dr. Known, and Ops making up that Team Rock team that was able to get a win on Rule 1. In the RLCS. Nush wants the 100 boost and wants possession. He won't be able to have both. Instead, he decides to prioritize the 100. Give Toxic the ball. I'm actually surprised to see a first touch reset. If he gets a bump here, it could end up working out. But often, that far away from the net, getting you know going for a first touch reset and, and using the flip right away is not something that's going to outplay a defender that is miles away retreating to net. The only way he was going to make it work was with finishing it off with a bump, but he didn't. So Toxic seems to have Nush figured out. After a first game that was Nush leading the majority of the time, Toxic finding his way to overtime before losing. Now he's all of a sudden got it completely figured out. And yeah, he doesn't even want <laughs> he doesn't even want this ball to go in. It, it seems like he tried to forfeit before it was in, but, you know, I did let it finish 7-1. Game number two going to go to Toxic. As he's nice and warmed up in ones, popping off with a double reset goal. Game number three. Nush and Toxic. Not sure yet if we'll be having a match after this one, but we will be having a match tomorrow. I don't know if you guys have been watching the YouTube videos, but if you have, you might have noticed Somebody on the YouTube videos says Nush gets a pretty impressive first goal. Nice little 50 actually used his reset to dash and recover even quicker. But if you have been watching the YouTube, then you know there's a player from Mina who has gotten wins against a ton of notable 1v1ers recently. And we're going to have his debut on my stream at least. I'm not sure if he's played in these show matches anywhere else. His Toxic will fake into his first goal. But that's right, face Sal. F S O L. We'll be playing a match tomorrow. Ush. Unable to steal this corner kickoff, or sorry, steal this corner boost off of the fake kickoff. And now Toxic will put a fairly weak flick on target. One that he's hoping to try and continue a possession with, but I don't think he threatened really enough. Nush is going to be able to escape, grab midfield boost, and just go W key at every possible moment. This has been Nush's MO, and that's why you've seen Toxic faking so much to try and get Nush to miss. But playing slow is not going to work there. As Nush is just quicker. Gets himself a 2-1 lead, a good bounce back from a game in which he scored only a single goal in game number two. Toxic looking for another impressive mechanical goal, but he's going to have to just use that second reset really as a way to not get immediately counterattacked on. Did do a good job to use his flip for that purpose, but 
Now again, it's Toxic on the goal line, trying to be really patient, trying to go as slow as possible. Single jumps, fakes. Can he get away with it? Or will Nush punish? Nice double. This is a great attack. Getting to play against Toxic coming from the opposite corner, I think makes it a little bit easier for him to use that reset to get over the top. When it's coming from the same corner, I feel like the angle for the defender maybe covers a bit more. As you get to shadow almost on that dribble. Toxic. Did he get perfect placement? He did because he is able to follow it up. Maybe perfect is one that he doesn't have to follow up, but it does stay within the posts. And he will dunk Nush's clear. Can we have Zen play one more time? I'm sure Zen will be, you know, is not done playing one show matches forever. But some of the top players aren't interested. Toxic! He has certainly leveled up his game in the air, it would seem. Using his flip directly underneath the ball to carry it with the flip, which is not something you see very often. Able to get another one in the process. Normally... You know, players air dribbling are doing so with their boost, not with flips. Toxic showing levels as he will back off here. Again, playing so patient in his own half. This time it works out as he waits for Nush to leave the ball. And he had saved the boost necessary to make this quick play. Strong first touch and just the right amount of boost to keep himself ahead of Nush for the follow-up. Dupo top one and ones. He might be. There's a very good chance he might be. But we haven't really seen a ton of movement or a ton of activity from the top players in ones since Salt Mine. And I think that that's probably to be expected. I think after Salt Mine 3, we had just about as much ones as you could ever hope for. Probably more ones then maybe even the players who like playing it have uh, really wished they signed up for it. So I'm sure we're going to see a little bit of a lull, but I bet you the top players in ones will be back before long in terms of grinding out the game. In the meantime, they're going to have to deal with guys like Nush who are continuing to work on their game and trying to add their name to the list of top players. If you look at RL Duels, like I said, Nush is still a top 10 player even after his loss to Nupo and it's certainly a win over Toxic would do well to push him even higher. They'll be back after the World Championship. Yeah, with the new formats for RLCS, there's a good chance that ones is going to end up just becoming an end of the year type activity because previously as the uh, the RLCS season was the entire year, you just had, I mean, you had to play ones at some point. And I think I specifically remember the time between regionals and the majors being a lot bigger. This time around, I think it was maybe just two weeks. And I want to say it was three, maybe maybe sometimes even four weeks between the regionals finishing and the major playing. So there was actually a ton of time to run tournaments around that time. Now it's really packed tight. And so I think even with this off season, this off season or this, like, this break, this transfer window is pretty much almost over after one week. So I expect that we will see, you know, less ones activity in between RLCS events because they're so packed tight but maybe that just means a ton of focus on it in the off season for example maybe a ones land <laughs> that would be amazing I don't know who would run it but I just hope I'm there if it happens I don't have the money to run a ones land maybe just maybe somebody out there does Stizzy wants to be your friend? Yeah, I actually recently became friends with Stizzy on Steam. Um, I guess he also wants to be friends on Epic. I was asking him if he's interested in one's matches. Maybe he is. Maybe that's a sign. Toxic right now finds himself down one in another close game. When this was the case in game one, he was able to equalize and send it to overtime. Look at the patience from Toxic. It's such a interesting... Dichotomy is not the right word between the two of them. Toxic almost seemingly trying to bring the game to an absolute halt. And then when Nush has the ball, he's trying to play it as quick as possible. Even sometimes when he doesn't have the ball, he's trying to play it as quick as possible. 
tries to chase Toxic down. Toxic able to dodge over the top of the bump and dash onto the wall. Now has himself a possession that he has to get a strong first touch on to fight the backwards momentum. And he did exactly that, the slow down flip from Toxic. This shot was not going in if he didn't take some heat off of it. And he uses this reset to slow it down and make sure that it falls underneath the crossbar as well as guiding it around Nush. What a shot from Toxic. He's tied it up again late, 6-6. Six, six. Nush not able to get to the midfield boost in time, so Toxic should just have a goal here. Nush thought he had it. Maybe could have committed harder for this boost. But he didn't want to have to like flip into the side wall and, and be thrown completely off the play just to get the boost. Probably would be just as bad of a situation, so... Razor within margins means that Toxic is in the lead, and that's a huge boost grab. Nush has to 180 out of reverse to get a play on the ball. He has a possession, a flick, Toxic pre-jumped, and a bump. That will secure it. Wait! Did Toxic almost recover to this? Did he go into the net and get a, another jump? I want to actually see what happened here. Oh, he jumped off the side wall. Wow. And if he actually stayed on the side wall, he was in the perfect place to make a save. That would have been insane. He just tried to play it even faster than he needed to. Another kickoff win for Toxic, though. He has gone to the wave dash kickoff. Doesn't want to get beat by it late in the game this time around. No ground pinch going to be available, so the ball will roll on the grass for overtime. 7-7. Seven, seven. Diagonal kickoff. And both of them... Oh, actually, no. Nush saved his flip. It didn't seem like he's really going to get the dash, but he does. Now he has a reset. Toxic defending on the close net, or the near post, I should say. But it doesn't matter. Nush able to sneak it right over the top of him with a late use of the flip. Toxic couldn't react in time with that kind of speed. Nush, he is winning on razor thin margins. But either way, he's up 2-1 in the series. Game number four, Nush on match points. Toxic trying to force a game five. Nice musty to start it all off. Toxic after winning this kickoff fairly deep into the blue half has picked a great way to be able to capitalize on that. Any other play doesn't really keep the ball up high enough and play it towards the net quick enough to take advantage. Oftentimes it's going to be tough to score because the distance between you and the defender is actually too close. But... Toxic found a way through using that musty. And now he tried to challenge off the ceiling. Nush didn't have to do much because Toxic overshot it. He'll quickly tie up the game. Nush with a much faster wave dash kickoff will win him this possession. Toxic thought about the ceiling. Nush trying to dunk this down into the top right corner. Can't get it. Pre-flip from Toxic. It's not going to be enough to get the ball over the top of Nush, but he will get... A boost steal, and now has a very low boost defending Nush. <laughs> Nush outplayed himself. <laughs> Nush outplayed himself. <laughs> he just reversed it onto the post. That would have been a pretty, uh, you know, creative save, I guess, if his idea was to go inside the net and then jump back out towards the ball. But Toxic gets to just roll the ball in as he sees Nush floundering there. Oh, Nush. He's going to be able to make it 2-2. You think about FBI so highly rated and ranked? Yeah, I think I... Did I message FBI recently? I think I have. I'd be interested in having FBI on. FBI was able to qualify for at least one stage of the salt mine, correct? Or did he just make it into... Deep into the qualifiers? I know Shoddy, who he often plays with, at least made one. Because he famously took Drally out in the qualifiers. Nush thought about going to the side wall, but decided it'd be better to force Toxic to play on low boost. If he had gone to the side wall, he's allowing both him and Toxic to fully reset in terms of boost him out and you know, play more like a set play. I don't think that you often want to allow Toxic to get to that position. Instead, if you're really anybody, you want to keep them on low boost. Playing it as awkwardly as possible. Cheeky dash here on the corner from Nush to gain a bit of speed to set up this play. 
Have you seen Musty's video? No, I know that FBI was in Musty's video recently. Did he, or was going to be based on his tweet? Did Musty release that? And what was it? What did him and FBI do? Toxic. Bumped all the way to the sidewall off the kickoff. It'll be a 5-2 lead for Nush. They played three 1v1s? Wait. He just straight up 1v1 FBI? They just played a best of three. Wait. Listen. Musty's pretty good at the game. But did FBI not just cook him? Am I, am I crazy? Musty won a game? Wait a second. Musty won a game. Interesting. I wonder if FBI recognized, you know, that uh, running the score up was maybe not the best content. Don't get me wrong. I mean, as far as I'm aware, I think Musty's even been top 100, you know, at least at some point in 1v1 in his career. But, I mean, it is FBI we're talking about. It's like a top 10 player pushing into the salt line. Nush. Able to steal the back corner boost. Wait, you said Musty thought he hacked? They played ones? Is that why Musty played him? He thought he like wasn't legitimately in the top 10 and thought he would maybe just be able to beat him? Toxic right now, down three. As he, again, slowly works one in from the corner to be within two. Yeah, did you guys see Venom to Rule 1? Venom to Rule 1 in place of Ahmad is some recent news. We also talked about Joyo to Oxygen in place of Ixo. Some recent news over in EU. Toxic. Never out of the game. Good pre-jump to dunk this low air dribble from Nush. Toxic high flick off the backboard. Ahmad no team? I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, if I've seen the news on where Ahmad might be going. I do think, I mentioned this before in a YouTube video, but I do think Mina 2 has the ability, as Toxic's about to tie this up, 6-6 six, six with a minute 30. I don't think Mina 2 has the ability to play like as a top eight team. I think rule one did not play at a top eight level at the last major, and I think Mina 2 could probably get there. Um, so it doesn't super surprise me that they decided to, to move to a new player. And Venom is somebody that I think the Mina you know, scene has, has highly rated for a long time. So we'll see how it goes. Oosh, searching for a demo in the corner. Toxic. Seemed to hold on to this dribble as long as he thought he could get away with it with Nush hiding behind the ball before eventually going for his flick. Nush is able to make that save. Now Toxic has to be careful here with this boost stolen in the corner. Being careful has been something that Toxic has done with ease. If Nush is able to win another one goal game, he is going to end up winning this series while being negative on goal differential by a decent margin. <laughs> He might win a 3-1 series while being very negative on goal differential for the whole series. If Toxic is not able to take this game, or even if he does, even if Nush wins in game five, it's got to be a big win to make up for that 7-1 loss. And that was actually with a forfeit. Might have been even worse had he not left with a minute or so left to go. And now, though, Nush on very little boost. He tried to be... As patient as possible, he single jumped himself back, saved the 21, and thought maybe he could muscle his way out of this situation. He didn't want to just use his flip right away on that first jump because it would have just gone into Toxic 
he would have had a poor recovery and likely would have gotten scored on all the same. So instead, he tried to just win the 50. He actually has this ball in the air. Toxic with no boost, but Toxic is able to just bump him out of the way or really just be in his way and not allow him to score. So it is going to be game five between Nush and Toxic. Game five, Nush and Toxic. Toxic with a speedy wave dash kickoff to start this one off and Nush dives in but actually recovers in time. I'm sure Toxic felt like he was in a good position there to kind of ground pinch or you know, take a long shot and score but Nush able to steal it away. And now a fake gets Toxic up in the air. He cannot get a touch on the ball. A box mod plugin was made that makes invisible cheaters visible. That is pretty interesting. <laughs> but they should not be having to make that. <laughs> also, it feels weird. It feels like Black Mod is messing with the game in a way that obviously is beneficial, you would think. Oh my goodness, Toxic! <laughs> what is this pinch? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Toxic is the king of pitches. I don't know if you guys saw Toxic's pinch in RLCS. He pinched it off of the post all the way across the field and into the net. But Toxic coming back from the opposite direction just sends almost a no bounce shot. And the reason why that's so insane is because this ball was basically at ground level. It just went so fast <laughs> that it almost didn't hit the ground. My goodness. <laughs> that was a boomer of a pinch. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. All right. I'm locked in now. I want Toxic going for pinches every time down. Toxic. Gonna have a boost deal. Has Nush on zero. And so I'm actually surprised that he played that into the cadence of Nush's speed. You know, normally you'll see players mix it up and force the zero boost player to hit the brakes in order to then take advantage of them. Instead, Toxic allowed him to maintain his speed. Maybe just because he felt like it would be too much of a change. Oh no, I was going to say, you put Toxic on the post, he's just going to pinch it the whole length of the field and into your net. You don't want to allow him to make that play. But this time it is just a squeeze out to the side wall. And Toxic eventually going to get his goal. Toxic and Nush with the wave dash hug on the kickoff. Interesting decision from Nush trying to power it across the net and see if he could win the race to the opposite corner. But Toxic could see that coming from a mile away, so he did take the 100 and now will have himself a possession. Yo, Hootie Hoo! Thank you for the raid! Of the 115 million viewers as Nush. Takes to the skies, too slow of a reset to score. As far as I'm aware, Hootie, I think, had a an interview today. Did, did he talk to the TSM guys today? Hopefully that was a good time. As Nush fakes a flick and goes low 50. That's tonight? Oh, that's tonight. Okay. Well, even better. Better yet, for the people who are here. Get a chance. Oh, what happened here with Toxic? He just thought Nush was going to chip it to the side wall, and he just tried to read that and get out ahead of it. But yeah, that's not what Nush did. <laughs> Nush instead got around the ball and just took it straight to the net. Oh, he talked to Oxygen today. Wait, did he have Joyo on the pot? Joyo was officially announced. That's where Hootie Hoo streams shine the brightest whenever he's able to get some of the pros or players in the scene in for a nice chat toxic ooh not able to get this 50 I thought Nush was out of position but he managed to get the save he's still playing on a pad though toxic's done a pretty good job so far this series 
of eventually turning these possessions into goals. Nush is able to reset on his 100, but it's still a clean possession for Toxic. What a save from Nush. As he pinches it off the crossbar. Possession doesn't end, though. <laughs> Toxic doing a great job of eventually getting his goal, regardless of how well Nush seems to play it. 38 boosts and a bit of a telegraph challenge here with a slow single jump to wave dash. Toxic can see that coming and knows how to play it over the top. Play off the ceiling from Toxic. Try to go for the perfect placement in the bottom corner, but Nush, not only does he get the save, he uses the post to set it up into the midfield. And a quick follow-up puts him right back in the lead. Most importantly, mustaches were secured for the Major. Oh, Oxygen's going mustache if they make it. They're definitely making the moves as Toxic scores quickly on the kickoff. It looks like we're going to be headed to a tie game here late in a best of five game five. But I think Oxygen probably has the right to be the most frustrated with, you know, the changes to the slots in the Major. Because I think EU number five would be a really strong team at the Major if they were able to be there. And that was, of course, Oxygen's position in this last split. Toxic. Air dribble resets. Gonna back off the ball now as he's playing with low boosts as well. But doesn't change the fact that these positions have Almost always gone in Toxic's favor, and he has time on his side. I wouldn't have been too surprised to see him almost extend it even more. And, you know, put on shots that force Nush to make a save, but not ones that will give him possession. It's probably a bit too risky to do that. But he could have wasted even more time before eventually getting his goal. He's been so perfect from that position. Oh, what a save from Toxic. Nush tried to get perfect crossbar down into the post. But Toxic, after the first jump on the save, recovered and made the play, and that's it, I think. I mean, Nush not getting anything out of that possession and with zero boost. Uh, it's really hard to imagine a way that he gets back involved in the play and finds a way to score. So, yeah, it'll be Toxic, who is not going to make, you know, the three, the potential 3-1 loss that almost happened where he had probably plus six in goal differential. It's not going to happen. It is going to be a game five win for Toxic as he takes down Nush. He does so by slim margins here in game number five. G, geez.